Hello viewers and welcome back to another video of one of your favorite trucks. Sold 1998 Silverado. Has 248,069 rough miles on it. It's a pretty hard used work truck. Not too many miles but lots of run time and lots of uh, hauling done with this truck. The complaint now is a uh, slow crank and a dead battery even after the battery was tested good. So I'm gonna take it up to the garage and we'll diagnose it, figure out what's going on with this thing. First off, let's hope it starts. All right, so we're starting to run and that's a good sign to get things kicked off. Let's dig into why the battery's going bad. do some very basic tests on your battery and your charging system on your vehicle with a simple voltmeter. You don't need anything expensive or fancy and while this is a little bit more expensive voltmeter than your typical cheap ones out there that will work just fine, it's going to give you the same results. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to test the battery. We should see about 12.6 volts on a good battery that doesn't have any problems. So there's 12 volts. Now, I just had this battery tested about a month ago, so I highly doubt that the battery is bad. My thinking is something's not charging it properly or something's causing a drain. So let's take it to the next step. As you can see, I have the voltmeter hooked up to the battery and the engine is off. Right now, we're at 11.98 volts. Let's see if this voltage increases after we start the engine. As you can see, we're running at 12.4 volts now. The problem is, if this alternator is working properly, we should be running at 14 or higher. So that tells me there may be something wrong with the alternator. Now generally, when an alternator goes out, it goes out completely and it won't charge the battery at all. And you'll get the little battery light on your dash lighting up. That's not the case with this truck. I have a feeling the alternator is going bad, but it's still charging a tiny bit. Not enough to keep the battery healthy, but yet not to the point where the battery light comes on. And once again, after I shut the engine down, we're back to 11.9 volts. Ooh, that's 7.3 though. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you can see, the wonderful engineers at GM, and I say that in a non-sarcastic way, which is kind of rare in the automotive field, put the alternator in a super easy place to get to. This alternator sits right on top of the engine, a few bolts and it's off, and the belt tensioner is right down here, easy to get to with a 3 8 inch breaker bar. So we should have this alternator off in a few minutes, and then we'll take it up for testing. One thing you want to make sure you do is you disconnect the negative terminal of your battery so you don't arc anything while disconnecting the alternator. Then you loosen the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the alternator to the bracket. Take them out the rest of the way with an electric ratchet if you have one. Remove the two bolts. Now the thing to remember on this alternator is the bracket is squeezed against the alternator when you tighten the bolts down. So it's going to get stuck in there. You won't be able to get this out by hand sometimes. In that case what you do is you take a pry bar, pry between the bracket and the alternator, as you can see. And it might take some working back and forth, but eventually out it comes. One thing you can do is you can take the battery cable off the alternator while it's still in the truck. This will make it easier because the alternator is secured and you don't have to worry about holding the alternator in place. But I wanted to get it in the light here so you get a better view of what this looks like and what you'll need to take it off. And the reason I flipped this up on this side is I want to show you a common issue that happens on these things and what you can do about it. As you can see, when I go to remove the battery cable from the alternator, the whole post is spinning and it's spinning the cable with it. So how do I get this off? Beneath the battery cable here is another 13 millimeter stud. You grab a 13 millimeter wrench and you can hold the stud steady with your wrench while you take your socket 
and spin the nut off just like so. And off comes the cable, just like that. Last but not least, don't forget to unplug the little connector on the back of the alternator. And out comes the alternator. Now let's go test it. So I got back from the test and the old alternator tested bad, which is what I figured it would be. So I've got myself an AC Delco manufactured alternator here. We'll throw this puppy on and see if we don't get 14 volts out of our charging system instead of 12. The reinstallation procedure is really easy. It's just a reverse procedure of what you did to get the old one out. Plug in the connector until it snaps in place. Reconnect the battery cable using the new nut provided with the new alternator. One important thing to remember is never over tighten this nut. You can always go back and snug it up later, but if you get it too tight, you can break the post off the alternator and then you have to get a new one. Put the little rubber boot back over the stud so you don't arc anything, and then set it back in the bracket. Now, as you can see, I'm running into a little bit of a problem here. I had to pry the alternator out of this bracket, so how do I get the new one back in? Not all of these alternators are manufactured to the exact dimensions where they mount. These little bushings here help make up for that difference. Now, the way you set these back and make room for your new alternator, take a little ball-peen hammer, And now, as you can see, the bracket is much wider for the new alternator, so it'll slide in easier. And look how much easier that slid into place. In fact, now it's too loose. But you don't need to worry about that because when you tighten these bolts up, it'll tighten the bushings up against the alternator and you won't have any problems. Then reinstall the belt, make sure it's wrapped properly around all the pulleys, get a nice good solid connection on the tensioner and push down, loop the belt around the idler pulley on top, and release. And that's it. And don't forget to reconnect your negative battery cable. Alright, so we've got a new alternator installed, I've got the battery reconnected to my voltmeter, let's start the engine up and see what happens. And that's how you fix your Silverado that's not charging. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was quick, it was easy, it was simple. But the cool thing about this was the battery light never came on on this truck. Never. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And I'll see you next time. Yeah, that's more like it. Look at that fuel gauge fluttering around. <laughs>